one day somebody does something unspeakable to someone else, to someone you hardly knew, man, you do something about it, because you can. All right, this story is brought to us from the Sun Times. We're going to Chicago, not to see the Bears, but no, we're going to talk about the police. Chicago's top watchdog revealed that she pushed to fire a police supervisor accused of lying to her office about a botched investigation into allegations of sexual assault against a fellow cop. Details of the case were included in a quarterly report published by Inspector General Deborah Witzberg's office that details serious misconduct investigations involving city workers. It was just one of several that found evidence of apparent police cover-ups. Witzberg's office reported that a police lieutenant who now faces dismissal conducted an untimely and incomplete investigation into allegations that a colleague sexually assaulted another person while working as a beat cop. Now, during the internal investigation, both police officials were sergeants working in the Bureau of Internal Affairs, the department's office, dedicated to conducting internal misconduct probes. The inspector general's office said, like other officials highlighted in the report, neither of them were named. So they're from internal affairs. After initially working the case, the lieutenant paused the investigation from October 2012 until May of 2018, according to the inspector general's office. In an interview conducted over five years after the last investigative activity, the lieutenant asked the sergeant complex compound questions that allowed the sergeant to avoid addressing the alleged conduct. <clears throat> the lieutenant didn't interview the sergeant's partner and other potentially significant witnesses, and an investigative report failed to account for evidence that weighed in favor of the alleged victim's credibility. So it almost sounds like they have here an internal justification more than an internal investigation. Uh, they're like asking this guy questions that he really doesn't have to, you know, uh, throw anybody under the bus. And then they don't weigh in the evidence that could help the victim's credibility. Like, it's almost like they're pushing the victim out. Like, come on. come on. While the lieutenant told Whitsburg's office that the investigation was halted at the behest of a commander, the lieutenant never documented that order and the commander denied giving it. Ah, that's the old Washington, D.C. Do not recall. The inspector general's office found the lieutenant had violated a range of departmental rules, including a rule against making false reports. That prohibition is colloquially known as the you lie, you die rule because dismissal is considered the appropriate form of discipline. Now, however, the inspector general's office reported last May that more than 100 current and former police officials were allowed to stay on the job after making false statements. A trend, Wisberg said, undermined the department's integrity. Well, just about every law enforcement office has an integrity issue. Uh, it's just the way it is. And I think part of that is based on, hey, we don't want to bring liability to our municipality. We don't want to bring liability to our city. We don't want to bring liability to our county. And because of that, there's an integrity issue. Hey, if I admit that this cop was wrong, we're liable for lawsuit. So we're not really going to admit it. We're just going to sweep it. Although sometimes, yes, there have been law enforcement officers that have been terminated, or as we call, fired. There have been others who have been forced to resign. I get all that, so yes, they're, but even when they're fired or they resign, there a lot of times there's no criminal charges when they committed a crime. And I think part of that comes back to, hey, we don't want to be liable. The city's not liable. We fired him for a policy violation. Had nothing to do with a crime. We're not liable for that. Now, the inspector general's office recommended the lieutenant be fired and placed on a list of former employees who can't be rehired. There will be a cop somewhere else. The police department concurred with the findings and asked the city's law department to draft charges 
seeking to dismiss the lieutenant, according to the IG's office. Um, he'll just go be a cop in Springfield, you know? <laughs> oh, Chicago don't want me, I'll go to Springfield. <laughs> so they give some related stories here, and this involves the, what we're talking about, the Chicago PD. Chicago police officers involved in the Dexter Reed shooting have been named in past complaints tied to traffic stops. The quarterly report, which covers the first three months of this year, also detailed the troubled response to a call involving a drunken off-duty officer who unlawfully and unnecessarily displayed a firearm in a rideshare vehicle. Faster! A sergeant ordered officers to shut off their body-worn cameras after learning the call involved a cop and two officers failed to document the incident in any report. Perhaps most glaring, a former sergeant who wrote a false report that minimized the extent of that intoxicated officer's misconduct, resulting in the officer receiving unduly light discipline, says the IG's office. Now, the inspector general's office asked the police department to reconsider the case, and the drunken cop was ultimately suspended for 25 days. He'll make it up on overtime. The sergeant was suspended for 14 days, while the other officers were benched for seven days. Benched? The retired sergeant was added to the city's do not rehire list. Jeffrey Criv, a former officer facing felony charges of repeatedly forging documents to get out of parking and traffic tickets, was also added to the list. And then it goes on. Another officer was suspended for 30 days for failing to arrest a city employee who was found with a gun during a traffic stop. And it goes down and it goes down and it goes down. Um, I mean, Chicago is about as bad as Houston or NYPD, it sounds like. The heck's going on over there in Cook County? Uh, but, you know, again, here we are. This is just Chicago that we're talking about. This is just Chicago. I mentioned New York, Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, um, Austin, Texas, Los Angeles, California, San Diego, California. I could go on and on and on. Denver, Colorado, Aurora, Colorado, Colorado Springs, Atlanta, New jo Atlanta, Georgia. On and on. Am I beating it here? You got to hear me. It's time to get your cameras out and start recording police when you see them out there. And that's not to say every cop is bad. That's not to say, oh, the cops are so bad, we're going to record them all. No, it's because there are bad cops. And we're not going to know who the bad cops are. And I know people are going to say all cops are bad, or there wouldn't be any good, uh, there are no good cops, or there wouldn't be bad cops. But I'm saying that. We don't know who the bad cops are until we catch them on video. You have 12 cops. Six of them are bad. We don't know who, who's bad. So we're going to record all 12 cops. The good ones will come in. The bad ones, you're going to get called out. And we may even file some complaints on you. That's how it works, guys. As long as these cops continue to lie, hide, and manipulate, we're going to continue to record. And as long as those kid cops stand by and go, you know, hey, he does his own thing. Why don't you do your own thing and go, bud, hey, hey, we don't do that. Stop. Stop. We don't do that in our department. Why don't you do that? Well, because I'll get excommunicated. I'll get ostracized. And uh, they'll run me out of the department. Well, do you want a job with the police department or do you want your integrity? Because sometimes you can't have both. 